This next video I almost didn't do because the content was so difficult for me to research and read about. But I think it's important that I put this video out there so that we stay aware that these type of psychopaths walk among us. And they either have not committed the crime yet or they have not been caught yet. But this is my video on Chris Watts and what he did to his beautiful family. Scott Peterson and Lacey Roca were married August 9, 1997. After they were married, Scott found himself a girlfriend and wanted to start a new life. So instead of divorcing Lacey, he chose to murder her on Christmas Eve 2002 while she was eight months pregnant with their son Connor. I never thought it could get any worse than this, but I was wrong. This guy, Chris Watts, married this beautiful lady, Shanann Ruchek, on November 3, 2012. And like Scott Peterson, Chris also found a girlfriend after they were married and wanted to start a new life. So instead of divorcing Shanann, he chose to murder her while she was 15 weeks pregnant with their son Nico. And to make this twice as bad as Scott Peterson, he also murdered their three-year-old daughter Celeste and their four-year-old daughter Bella. It happened in the state of Colorado, above Denver. in this neighborhood, in this house right here. This is the house where Chris Watts and Shanann and their two daughters lived. Now when we go down to Street View, you can see at the time that the Google vehicle went through here, the house was not here. But between the time this picture was taken and the murders took place, four homes were built in this lot right here. And you can see this is a house that the Watts lived in, and then there are three other houses off to their right. Now, Chris Watts may have gotten away with it or would have been caught much later if it wasn't for the neighbor that lived in this house who had a security camera that was always filming. And it was filming from this area here out getting the street here. And you could also see Chris Watts and the Watts driveway. The day that Shanann and her daughters went missing and the cops showed up, the neighbor here checked his security camera. And about 5.30 in the morning, you could see Chris Watts back his truck into the driveway, partially into the garage, because that's when he was loading Shanann's dead body into the car. Now, originally, I thought that he killed all three of his family members in the house, but that's not what happened. In a later confession, he said that he murdered Shanann in the house. Four-year-old Celeste saw him wrapping her body up in a sheet. She asked, what is wrong with Mommy? He said, Mommy isn't feeling well. So he took her and put her on the floorboard of his truck, came back in, took his two daughters, put them in the, tr in the back seat of his, his crew cab truck, and drove away. He left the house, most likely went this way, this way, down this road to this Highway 52, took the Highway 52 all the way down through here, till it met the 76. And on the 76, he took it all the way down through here. And my guess is he exited probably right here. Went down this road. Turned left up this road. Probably took this road somewhere around through here. Down this way. Now remember, this is just a guess. Down through here. Probably down through here. Possibly could have gone up through here. But his end, the his goal was to get to this spot right here. Where you can see these two tanks. There's an oil pump here. 
And what happened was this. I think he pulled his truck possibly up into this area. I don't know. He could have parked it over here at first. Then he took the security blanket for the three-year-old daughter, Celeste, took her security blanket and used that to smother her. Then he took her lifeless body and dumped her in this tank right here. The opening to the tank was only eight inches across, which is about 20 centimeters. And I heard one report say, heard it, I didn't read it, somebody was saying it. I heard that report, they said that he had to break some of her bones to get her into that little tiny 20 centimeter opening, eight inches. He then came back to the vehicle. Four-year-old Bella said, are you going to do to me what you did to Cece? He said he doesn't remember what he said to her, but he just remembers her last words were, no, daddy. And then he took the same blanket and started smothering her. Now, the autopsy report said that four-year-old Bella had bite marks on her tongue and on the inside of her mouth, on her cheeks, and that there was blunt force trauma to the left side of her jaw, which tells me that she was probably struggling, fighting for her life, and he either punched her to knock her, knock her unconscious so he could kill her easier, or smacked her in the jaw with his elbows, probably punched her just to knock her unconscious so he could kill her. After he killed her, he took her up and put her in this tank right here, and once again had to stuff her through a, an 8-inch diameter opening, which is 20 centimeters across. Now after that, he took his wife's body, and he buried her somewhere over here. I'm not sure if it's right in here. Somewhere in this area could be here, but this is the generalized corner of where he buried his wife in a shallow grave after he murdered her. Now some people are saying that it was a spontaneous murder. I think it was premeditated because the day before he told his buddies not to worry about going to this location here that he would take care of it. And as far as I'm concerned, that's premeditation. This was a very difficult video for me to do, but there you have it. The Chris Watts murder of his wife, their unborn son Nico, his three-year-old daughter Celeste, and his four-year-old daughter Bella right here on Google Earth.